schools are ditching Google from all fronts. Up until the pandemic, Google Classroom interest was increasing year after year. But since 2020, interest in Google Classroom has struggled to even reach levels of 2015. Instead, many schools are opting for third-party solutions like Schoology, Canvas, and Blackboard. It's not just Google's virtual classrooms that schools are ditching either. Schools are also ditching Gmail. A quick Google search will bring up dozens of articles from school newspapers detailing the change. Here's a few examples. If you look up the opposite, however, not only do you find fewer results, but the results that you do find are often from 2010. And as for the oh-so-famous Chromebooks, these used to be the go-to devices for many school districts. But more recently, schools have started to complain about them. Apparently, Chromebooks have very short lifespans, making them a rather bad investment. This is a very bad sign, not just for Google's educational business, but their office suite as a whole. Here's the thing, everyday people virtually never pay for Google Drive or Google Docs or Gmail because the free tier is more than enough for most people. So much of the money that Google and Microsoft makes from such products comes from corporations and schools. Google was never really able to break into the corporate market with their office suite, but it did seem like they were breaking into the school market. The collaboration features and online nature of Google's office suite made it perfect for team projects and presentations. Combine this with the pandemic and you would think that schools would be paying Google more than ever. And that was the case at the beginning. When schools didn't know where to go, they turned to a familiar brand, leading to Chromebook sales rocketing by 87% between 2019 and 2020. But now that schools have had time to become familiar with Google shortcomings and research other solutions, it appears that a popular choice is to ditch Google. And here's why. To understand why schools are suddenly ditching Google, we first have to take a look back at why Google became so popular among schools in the first place, as it was definitely not because it was the best option. I mean, there was never really any comparison between Microsoft Office and G Suite. Though G Suite had a few unique features like easy collaboration and auto-saving onto the cloud, Microsoft Office was the clear winner. And this is why corporations never really jumped on board with G Suite. They were looking for the best tools available. Not to mention, people were already familiar with the Microsoft Office suite, so going with Microsoft Office was a no-brainer. For schools, however, the choice wasn't as clear. Sure, Microsoft was better, but what real value would children, especially in elementary school, get from Excel or Word? The reality was not much. I remember back when I was in kindergarten and first grade, our class would go to the computer lab every week just to practice typing. As we moved into 4th and 5th grade, we would still write and revise our essays on paper. But when we were ready for the final draft, we would switch over to computers. But that was really the extent of all computer use. So safe to say, Microsoft Office was quite overkill for most school applications. But it wasn't just Office that was overkill, it was really the whole computer experience. Most students had no use for a full-on Windows machine or Outlook email client. In fact, this just made students harder to manage. Instead of working on the final draft of an essay, students would just jump onto Armor Games or Miniclip. So giving children access to a computer was often more of a distraction than a tool. Not to mention, Windows and Office were quite expensive. Schools often had to shell out $100 plus to Microsoft alone with each computer. Clearly, what schools needed was a cheaper, watered-down version of the whole computer experience. This seems like the perfect opportunity for Google to step in with the G Suite, and that's what they tried doing in 2006, but it wasn't as successful as you might think. While Google's offerings did mesh better with the needs of schools, it wasn't something that schools really paid much attention to. After all, each school only had one or two computer labs, so paying a premium for 25 or 50 computers wasn't the biggest concern. Not to mention, schools had full control of when they would incur these costs. They could just stick around with Windows XP and Word 2003 as long as they wanted. So in the late 2000s, schools weren't exactly jumping up and down to switch to Google, but all of this would change with the 2010s. Google's popularity within the educational space can really be summed up by one trend. Schools aiming for a student to device ratio of one to one. Suddenly, buying Windows licenses wasn't just a matter of purchasing 25 or 50. 
Elementary schools themselves had to buy several hundred, middle schools and high schools had to buy thousands, and colleges had to buy tens of thousands. Some richer schools continued to shell out money for Microsoft licenses, but this didn't last for long, as Microsoft would shoot themselves in the foot. In 2010, Microsoft would introduce a subscription model for Office called Office 365, and this would eventually become the only option. Really, the only reason for this move was that a subscription model was more lucrative for Microsoft than a licensing model. Most corporations would just pony up the cash and jump onto the subscription, because for professional use, the G Suite wasn't really a viable option. For schools, however, Google's offerings started to seem a lot more attractive. Google's offerings were not only cheap starting at just $3 per student per year, but you could even get it for free if your school met certain qualifications. Around the same time, Google would also come out with the Chromebook, which was also perfect for schools. Schools didn't have to worry about kids doing anything too crazy with Chromebooks, because they couldn't do much to begin with. It turned out that Chromebooks and the G Suite were the exact watered-down versions of computers that schools were looking for. And before you knew it, schools were switching to Google left and right. This isn't to say that they ditched Microsoft completely. Schools might have still had a few dozen Windows and Office-based computers in computer labs. But as for the hundreds and thousands of computers that were being issued to students, these were of course Chromebooks. So when Google launched Classroom in 2014, it's no wonder why it became the go-to option for most schools. But this heyday for Google Education only lasted for a few years. By the late 2010s, teachers and students started noticing quite a few shortcomings. You see, Google Classroom was nothing more than a UI to share and manage Google Drive documents and presentations. When a student turns in a document, literally the only thing that's happening is that the sharing permissions are being changed. The document gets shared with the teacher and the student loses editing permissions. That's pretty much it. This in itself was a pretty crappy solution because students could no longer edit the document once it was turned in, which didn't really make sense in a lot of situations. Also, there were no robust systems for self-grading assessments, announcements, gradebooks, online discussions, or meetings just to name a few. These are all basic features that are available in every other e-learning solution. But despite the shortcomings, most schools put up with Google throughout the late 2010s because it was cheap and was mostly sufficient for their needs. But all of this would change with the pandemic. When the pandemic hit, there was a massive influx of schools switching to Chromebooks and Google Classroom because that's what was popular. But as the pandemic raged on, schools simply started investing in better solutions, and the reasoning isn't rocket science. Virtual classrooms were no longer an extension to in-person classrooms. For a period of time, they were a full-on replacement to in-person classrooms. And even with the shift back to in-person classes, the utilization of these e-learning platforms is larger than ever. In fact, in many schools, it seems that the in-person aspect is now the extension. Every homework, every quiz, every test, and every project is completely online. The instructions are posted online, the students work together online, and the project is turned in online. Basically everything other than the teacher's lecture itself can be found on Canvas or Schoology or whatever platform the school is using. At universities, even the lectures are automatically recorded and uploaded onto these platforms. In terms of cost, Canvas does have a free tier, but that's mostly for small-scale implementations. For example, if you are running a yoga class or a math tutoring service, you might use the free tier. For district-wide and university-wide implementations though, Canvas is not free. It's actually quite expensive. Canvas doesn't have any sort of set pricing and each school is handled on a case-by-case -case basis. But here are some numbers that are floating around online. It seems that on average, schools have to pay an upfront fee of several thousand dollars to set up the initial system, plus about $25 per user per month. This could be higher or lower depending on what level of integration and the branding a given school is looking for, but that's a ballpark number. As you can see, that's several times more than Google's $3 per month and free tiers, but systems like Canvas are also several times more effective than Google's tiers. And given how heavily these systems are now utilized at schools, it simply doesn't make sense to go with a watered-down version from Google. The same logic applies to Chromebooks as well. Students no longer go to the computer lab once a week to practice typing. They use computers the entire day at school and after school as well. Also, they're doing increasingly complicated tasks. Nowadays, students are 3D modeling in engineering classes and coding algorithms in computer science classes even in middle school. 
Also, every job in the world uses Windows or Mac, so it really makes no sense to train students to use Chromebooks. Some districts are even going as far as purchasing MacBooks and iPads for students. But even those that aren't going that far are very much seeing a resurgence in Windows and Office and more professional tools in general, even though they're more expensive. In the end, it seems that Google's greatest advantage within the educational space has also become their greatest weakness. When tech adoption was still relatively early stage with schools, Google was able to make a big splash by offering tech for extremely cheap, whether that be Chromebooks, the G Suite, or Google Classroom. While these options did have their shortcomings, when the virtual classroom was simply an addition to in-person learning, they held up all right. But when virtual learning is front and center, the whole Google ecosystem starts to fall apart. We should also mention that school districts are now being run by a newer generation that better understands tech. They realize that investing in good tech for students is way more valuable than buying pencils and papers and desks or even building new buildings. The ROI is simply incomparable, and that's why schools are giving up on Google. They're simply leaning towards more professional solutions that make more sense in our increasingly tech-driven world. Education may not be the only realm in which Google is losing ground. They may also be losing ground in YouTube with their new ad block policies. If you want to know why, check out this video. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.